Often when there's a haunting, a child is involved. Either a ghost haunting a child, or the ghost of a child haunting others. Those are the stories we'll be exploring here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you want to hear more stories, click or tap on the end screen or on the playlist in the pinned comment below. The great gods of YouTube will be most grateful if you do. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, 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 together. We've lived in a house in the English countryside for the past 20 years, and it's a relatively old house. The current house was built in the 1940s, after World War II destroyed our village. But before that, there was an even older house standing on the foundation so it's likely that something is actually haunting the land, not just the house. Over the years, we've experienced quite a few supernatural things in the house, like hearing footsteps when no one is around. And the footsteps come from areas that are no longer walkable, like walking through closets, walls, and windows. And things get thrown from shelves, but they don't just fall. They'll be lifted several inches into the air, hang there for a moment, and then get thrown to the ground with a great force. We always try to find a logical explanation, but after witnessing a perfume bottle get separated from its lid in mid-air, then watching both pieces fly in different directions across the room, it becomes increasingly difficult to find a rational explanation. Another thing that's very difficult to explain away involves my younger brother and sister, when my brother was a toddler, he woke up one morning and told the whole family that during the night, he got out of bed and went downstairs. And when he got there, an old lady yelled at him to get back to bed. My younger sister had the same experience a few years later. They were both about two or three years old when it happened, so my sister hadn't even been born when it happened to my brother. And by the time it happened to her, my brother had completely forgotten that it happened to him so it's very unlikely that he told her about it. Over the years, my parents and I have tried to explain it away, telling ourselves that they were only dreaming. But the fact that they both describe the lady in nearly identical terms, it does worry us. And they claim they saw this old lady in the newest part of the house, too, the addition that we built back in 2006. I've never felt comfortable in that part of the house, despite it being the most recent. All that was on the land before we built the addition was a single blossom tree and some grass. But I feel very uncomfortable there. For a couple of years, the activity actually stopped. But it started up again recently. Lately, I've had books thrown around in my bedroom. And my mother woke up a few days ago when she thought that she heard my sister coming down the hallway. My sister always asks my mom to do her hair in the morning despite being old enough to do it herself. On that particular morning, Mom couldn't be bothered doing my sister's hair, so she pretended to still be asleep. After a little while, she heard a voice next to her saying, Mom? Mom? Mommy? But she kept her eyes shut, still thinking it was my sister. However, when 30 seconds passed and my sister hadn't tried to shake my mom awake, or sit on the bed as she normally does in the morning. Mom opened her eyes, only to find that she was completely alone in the room, and my sister was still in her own bed, asleep. My parents' bedroom is located directly above the room where my brother and sister saw that old lady. So now we've had an old entity and a child entity that may be connected to the land or the original house. Having lived in this house as long as we have, we're not entirely bothered by most of the things that happen, and nothing ever harmed us. But the voice calling out to my mom and addressing her as mommy? Well, that did spook us a lot, because it's the most concrete thing that's happened to us yet, and it's the hardest to explain away. This happened in late March in India. I was 14 years old and a huge movie fan. 
In my village, there was no cinema, so I had to travel about 12 kilometers to get to the nearest theater. We usually went to the movie in groups, but one day none of my friends wanted to go, so I headed out alone for an evening show. Afterwards, I was dropped at a bus stop that's located at the edge of my village. It was around 11 p.m., and my village being very small, there was not a soul in sight. I started walking towards home along the main road. After walking a bit, I saw a woman dressed in a white and red sari. She was covering her face with the sari, just like newlyweds do in India, so I assumed she was a new bride. I thought to myself, What's a newlywed bride doing out here all alone late at night? She was just standing there under some bamboo trees, with no houses or buildings nearby. I called out to her and asked if she needed help, but instead of answering, she started walking into the trees, and I found myself following her. It felt as though I had been mesmerized. The strange thing is, no matter how fast I walked, I was never able to catch up to her. She was always ahead of me. After a while, I regained my consciousness, and I looked around and discovered that I had wandered into the middle of a jungle. Suddenly, all the scary stories that my elders ever told me came rushing back to my mind, and I stood there, frozen. I remembered that in our culture, an evil spirit will appear dressed as a newlywed bride with no legs. I slowly looked down at the woman's legs and realized she didn't have any. I wanted to run, but the thought of her being behind me and possibly giving chase made me feel nauseous. Just as all of this was going through my mind, she stopped and turned to look at me. At that very moment, I told myself, you'd better run or you're going to die right here. So I ran. I ran like there was no tomorrow. And when I got within sight of home, I started screaming for my mother. My mother and brothers came outside and asked me what was wrong. I explained everything to them, and my mother performed some rituals before letting me into the house. She wanted to ward off evil so that it wouldn't enter our home. I suffered from a very high fever for three days straight after seeing that evil bride. Once I was healthy again, I asked my mom if there were any new brides in our village or any surrounding village, and she said there wasn't. I still went to the movies after that, but during the day, and never alone at night, again. I bought a 90-year-old farmhouse in Oklahoma on one acre of land. The house is on one end of the property, with the rest of it being pasture. Across from my pasture is a vacant lot that has a small handmade cross surrounded by stuffed animals. Before moving in, I had my house blessed and smudged with sage by a holy man from the Creek tribe. Afterwards, I asked him if he had found anything in my home, and he said, Yes footsteps. I heard small footsteps three times during the blessing, so I sent the spirit away. The previous owner never lived in the home. She just bought it to remodel and sell. She had an autistic son, and he wanted to see the house one last time after I closed on it. When we entered the house, he noticed the smudge pot with the sage and asked about it. I told him that an Indian holy man had cleansed and blessed the house. He turned to me and said, I hope the man got rid of the footsteps. Well, I was shocked to hear him say that, because he had spent very little time in the house. Weeks later, I found out that the cross by the pasture was put there in remembrance of a young girl that died there. She had been playing alone in a shack that burned to the ground with her trapped inside. The strangest part? Whenever the stuffed animals around the cross start to get dirty, new clean ones appear, seemingly out of nowhere. No one has ever been seen doing this. Not even the people who live in the house right next to the cross have seen anyone do it. And all family members of that little girl are either dead or have moved away. So 
Who's tending to the memorial? My family and I moved into a two-story house in Oklahoma back in 1978. When some friends of the family found out we were going to buy the house on Magnolia Street, they begged my parents not to do it, warning them that it was haunted. But my father didn't believe them, so we moved in anyway. And it wasn't long before strange things did indeed start to happen. We're a rather large family, and over the years as many as ten people have lived there at any one time, including two young nephews. The first strange event happened when my father was working in the yard one day. He came stomping inside, angry, demanding to know why none of us were picking up my crying nephew, who was a newborn baby at the time. Well, we all looked at him like he was crazy, and we showed him that the baby was fast asleep. Dumbfounded, he returned to the yard, but he told us later that day that he continued to hear the baby crying as soon as he got outside. Even if my nephew was asleep or not home at all, Dad would always hear him crying. On another occasion, my dad was in the kitchen drinking coffee at the table. He looked up and he saw a woman with long brown hair watching him from the stairway. He called my mom over and she saw it too, right before the woman vanished into thin air. The kitchen was the most haunted room in the house. Another time, my mom and sister were having coffee and the dish drainer full of cups lifted itself up off the counter, hung in midair, and crashed to the floor, breaking everything in it. Mom said maybe the ghost didn't like dishes cluttering up the counter space. Once my mom got up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. To get there from her bedroom, you had to walk through the kitchen. And when she did, she saw a woman standing at the kitchen sink. Thinking if she just ignored it, the ghost would leave her alone. So mom kept her head down and continued walking to the bathroom. But when she reached the bathroom door, she felt a hand on her shoulder and heard a woman's voice say, What the hell do you want? When mom turned around, the woman disappeared right before her eyes. My sister said she felt someone sleeping in bed next to her almost every night. At first she thought it was one of our younger siblings crawling into bed with her. But one night, something pulled the blankets off her, and when she reached down to pull him back up, she realized she was alone in the room. But she could see an imprint in the mattress next to her, as if someone were sitting on the bed with her. And every single night, my mom would hear a toddler falling down the stairs, hitting the kitchen floor and crying. We figured we had several spirits in the house. Two women, two men, and the crying baby. The other female spirit that manifested was a gray-haired old lady that my brothers insisted was evil, so much so that one of my brothers took to sleeping outside, regardless of the weather. The two male spirits pretty much kept to themselves, making no fuss or noise. One time, my mom was watching TV, and she saw a cowboy standing at the back door. When she got up to see who it was, he simply disappeared. But in the end, the hauntings proved too much for us, and we gave up and moved. The house was demolished in 1988, and inside the walls, they found an 8-inch thick binder full of documents and deeds about the house and the land dating back to the 1700s. The land is vacant now, with only the cellar remaining to testify that a house ever existed in the first place. I don't know about the spirits, though. They may still be hanging around. Shortly after my sister's birth, my mom was sleeping in her bedroom while my baby sister slept next to her in the bassinet. Mom woke up in the night to see a boy of about eight or nine years old peering over the edge of the bassinet at my sister. She asked him what he was doing there, still half asleep. She wasn't registering just how insane it was to have a strange child in her home in the middle of the night staring at her baby. The boy didn't answer, 
He just continued looking at my sister for a while before he turned and left the room. By this time, Mom was fully awake and realizing the potential danger and just plain craziness of the entire situation. She got up and went after him. As she ran into the living room calling out to him, she watched him disappear by simply walking through the wall. I'm beginning to wonder if having paranormal experiences is almost a genetic thing. My dad and I have never had any experiences at all, and I take after his family, while my sister takes after my mom's side, and both my mom and sister have had experiences. I'm sort of jealous, to be honest. When I was 12 years old, I became very interested in the paranormal. So my friend told me about standing in front of a mirror and reciting the words Bloody Mary several times in a row. Supposedly this Bloody Mary will show up in person if you do that. I wanted to try it, but I was too afraid to do it alone. So one day, this friend and I stayed after school. After everyone had left, we walked down through the empty hallway to the girls' bathroom. We stood there in front of the mirror and began saying, Bloody Mary. After saying it five times, we heard a very strange female voice calling our names. We were so scared we ran out into the hall, but nobody was around. Two days later, I was sleeping in my upstairs bedroom. I was awakened around two in the morning by the sound of crying. My parents were downstairs in their bedroom asleep and there were no TVs or radios on. I was terribly frightened because it sounded like a young woman crying right there next to me in my room. I looked up, and I saw a lady standing next to my bed, weeping. She was very pale, and her tear-streaked face was surrounded by a mass of unruly black hair, and she wore a torn white gown. Continuing to cry, she just stared at me, until I finally said... Leave me alone. Then she disappeared. But I could not sleep again that night. The next night, I dreamed that a spirit of another woman was choking me, and the crying lady from the previous night was standing next to her, watching. Then I woke up, and I couldn't breathe, and it felt like somebody was in the room with me. I feel that by chanting Bloody Mary, I somehow drew these spirits to me and it was a very scary experience. Although I didn't like that happening to me, I still do want to explore the paranormal. However, I'm afraid of what might happen, and my parents think I'll go to hell if I continue. Listen, you will not go to hell for chanting Bloody Mary. How do I know? I'm the all-knowing eyeball that hears and sees everything. That's how I know. Now, click on the screen above to hear more stories like this, so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends. And if you don't, I'll know.